Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and I'm a medical student from Australia. In today's video, we'll be looking at the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT and we'll be specifically covering the tips you can use to improve your speed and the important calculations that you need to know in order to answer the questions in the test. And talking about the questions, we'll also be answering uh, the official UCAT questions that are provided on, the, on their website and I've broken them down into percentages, proportionality, graphs, and taxes. So this is the final video in my UCAT mini-series, so feel free to check out the channel and watch those other videos if you need help on the other sections. So just an overview of the quantitative reasoning section for 2022. So this section will give you 25 minutes to answer 36 questions, which gives you around 40 seconds per question. So the purpose of the section is to assess how well you can use your numeracy skills to solve problems, and analyze data in order to answer the question. And this data will be presented to you in tables, graphs, and charts. So from my notes from when I did the quantitative reasoning section, I've got a list of things that you need to revise before you actually do the test, So, which I've written down here. So number one, you need to know how to use and apply percentages. So specifically, if they know how to calculate the percentage change, um, you know, know how to calculate the original price if you're given a final price of a product and you need to be really good at going between decimals and fractions and percentages and all that. Uh, number two, you need to know about proportionality and ratio so we'll cover that in the questions pretty soon. Uh, you need to know how to calculate rates of change. Um, a common one in the UCAT is speed, so speed is distance over time. You need to know how to use mean, median, mode and range because this comes up a lot in most of the questions. And you need to know how to calculate the area and dimensions of like basic shapes using like Pythagoras' theorem, pi r squared, and just knowing that length times width is the area of a rectangle. So my first tip for this section would be to practice using the inbuilt calculator. So this can be quite slow during the actual test. So you wanna make sure that you pair this with mental arithmetic in order to increase your speed. And also you don't want to make any unnecessary calculations to waste your time. On a side note, or in conjunction with that, it will be good to practice using the keyboard shortcuts. So right here, if you want to bring up the calculator, you just press Alt C, and that's like a shortcut key to bring up the calculator. So we'll get rid of that here. Um, to go to the next question, it's Alt N, so for next question. And to go to the previous question, it's Alt P for previous. And in some laptops, you can press Alt F for flag, but for some reason it doesn't work on my laptop. And another tip, if you're running low on time, um, it'd be good to eliminate any obviously incorrect uh, answers and then make an educated guess. So this tip um, can pretty much be applied to any section of the UCAT. So like I said, I've done previous videos on different sections and this tip always comes up. Um, another tip which also comes up is to prioritize short or simple answers over complex, or short or simple questions over complex questions. Just because every question in the test is worth one point regardless of how difficult it is. So if you think a question needs multiple calculations, don't be afraid to skip it and come back to it later on if you have extra time. And as I said before, you don't need to make calculations for every single question. With some questions, which are easy, you can just look at the data and notice any massive differences in the numbers that you're given. And based off that, you can eliminate incorrect answers or potentially make an educated guess. So we'll start off with this question here. So this is one of the tax questions I was talking about. So the table shows the total tax paid in dollars on annual taxable income. So we're given a, like a, a table here. For example, a person with an annual taxable income of $60,000 will pay $4,990 plus 25% of this. So before we actually get onto the question, I'll just, we'll just break down what this means. So $60,000 means that they're within this tax bracket right here. They'll pay $4,990, which is this, plus 25% of 60,000 take the lower end of the bracket here. So we just have, all we have to do is apply it to this question. Just replace 60,000 with 28,950. So this 28,950 belongs in this section here. Um, so you'll be, instead of 25%, you'll be doing 15%. So in order to calculate the tax, it is um, 28,000 
950, take away 8,950, which is 20,000. And then you'll calculate 15% of that. So get up the calculator. So 15%, which is the same as saying 0.15 times 20,000. Okay, 3,000. But then you're playing the eight, $895, so plus 895. So as you can see, 3,000 plus 895 is option B. That's how much tax he pays. So we'll go to the next question. So I'll do O N. Good. So Corey has an annual taxable income equivalent to $2,500 per month. She wants to save enough money each month to pay her tax for the year. The minimum amount, the nearest dollar that Corey has to save each month is what? So the first thing we'll do, we'll bring up the calculator once again, um, and we'll calculate how much money she makes in the whole year. So we got $2,500 per month times 12, because it's 12 months in a year. So this is $30,000 she makes in a year. So we want to calculate how much money she pays, um, how much tax she pays on this $30,000. So we can see that it falls again within this second tax bracket here. So $30,000 take away 8,950. So take away $8,950 is equal to $21,050. And we want to find 15% of that. So we'll times that by 0.15. So, okay. And then we'll add $895 to that. So plus eight, nine, five. So this is the total amount of tax that she has to pay for the whole year. But the question is asking how much tax per month or how much money she has to save per month in order to pay this tax. So we'll divide this by 12. So $337, which we can round up to $338. Boom, right, boom. Okay, Omar has a taxable income of $36,250 per year. So what percentage, correct to one decimal place, of his taxable income does Omar pay in tax? Okay, so you can see here that this is a, not as hard as I thought it would be, so $36,250 belongs in this tax bracket right here. So look, we know that the total tax paid at the top of his taxable income bracket is $4,990. So all you need to do is calculate what percentage of 36,250 is this number. So we'll get the calculator up. We will do um, 4,990 divided by 36,250, which is equal to 13.8%. Boom. That's pretty good. And I think we have one more question because uh, this is associated with four different questions. So the values at the bottom end points and at the top end points of each income tax bracket are going to be increased by 10%. What will be the change in income to the nearest dollar after tax has been deducted of a person with a taxable income of $36,250? So if I was in the actual test and this question came up, I just know right away that it's going to require multiple calculations. So and as, for the purpose of this video, we'll just skip this one right now because it would take a bit too long and I want to get other, get to the other questions. Okay, so this is a graph question. So this is what it says. The graph shows the velocity of two cars at different times. So we've got velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, cars A, cars B. So how much greater is the acceleration of car A than the acceleration of car B, given that acceleration is change in velocity over change in time? So we know so if you did your revision, you'd know that this straight line here means there's no change in acceleration whatsoever because the, um, the velocity is constant. So car B has a acceleration of zero and car A, so um, it's increased from zero velocity to 16 meters per second over a period of four seconds. So 16 divided by four is four meters per second squared. So the difference is four. So that's a simple one. This is the questions that you want to seek out in the actual test because they're really easy to do and it's worth one point. Okay, the graph shows Linda's score scores in four projects in her first year at university. 
okay. In her second year at university, Linda scored 99 points in her fifth project. What is the difference between her fifth project score and the second year in the second year and her average project score in the first year? So this is a pretty easy one as well. So we'll get up the calculator. So all we have to do is calculate the average score of the, for the first year. So we just type in all these numbers, uh, so add all these numbers together, divide by four, and that's the mean. So we've got 98 plus 92 plus 97 plus 89, which equals that, and divide it by four. So the average score for our first year is 94, and she scored 99 in her fifth project. So the difference is five. Boom. Oh, one thing I didn't mention as well is that when using the calculator, instead of having to press like um, individual, like seeking it out with your mouse and doing that, you can instead just use the keyboard and then you can um, learn how to use the keyboard to do plus or um, equals or divide or multiply as well. So that can cut down how long you spend using the calculator which like every second counts, so make sure you know how to do that. Um, what questions should we do now? So I reckon a question, I'll find one right away. Okay, this is a percentage question. So mineral water is classified on the basis of the amount of dissolved solid material mineral that it contains. The chart shows the codes for different levels of total dissolved solids, TDS, and the number of mineral water bottles for each code sold at the store. So this is the data that we're given. So what fraction of the total number of bottles sold at the store with a TDS greater than or equal to 50 milligrams a litre had the code of TDS4? So this has multiple parts to this question, but it's still quite easy. So all we have to do, so, so greater than 50 milligrams. So it's basically add up everything, which is so add up this one, this one, and this one. So we'll get the calculator out again. So Alt C, bring it over here. So we got um, 83, oh, wrong number, 83 plus 37 plus 30. I mean, you could do this in your head, but I just like using the calculator. So yeah, in total there's 150 bottles sold, but then we want to know the, um, t for the TDS number four, what fraction? So 30 out of 150. So basically, I'll put this on the screen, so 30 over 150. And you can just simplify that fraction into um, 1 over 5, because you divide both the bottom and top by 30. And that's it. I think that's the correct. So we'll just double check that. B is the correct answer. That's correct. Cool. Okay, so the table shows the percentage of nickel in two coins, coin A and coin B. If both the coins are made of only nickel and copper, what is the difference between the weight of copper present in coin B and the weight of copper in coin A? Um, so we want to figure out how much copper is in each coin. So coin A weighs 6.5 grams and it has 75% copper. Coin B weighs 5 grams and it has, how much is this? 100 take 16 is 84% um, copper. So we'll calculate how much copper is in coin A first. So whatever, so 75%, oh my bad, so 0 0.75 times by 6.5. So there's 4.875 grams of copper in coin A. So I'll write that down, 4.875. Um, and there's what, 84%, so 0 0.84 times five grams of copper in coin B. So 4.2 grams of copper in coin B. In order to find the difference, you just do the largest number, subtract the smallest, so 8.875, take away 4.2. You, you could have done this in your head, but for the video, it makes more sense. So 0 0.675 grams, which is answer D. That's one point, one question down. So 40 seconds per question, so you have to do this pretty fast. I'm just doing it a bit slower now, just for the purpose of the video, and just so you can, guys can follow along more easy, easier. 
So what questions should we do now? So we did graph, we did taxes, we've done percentages. We'll do a proportionality question. So we'll go to question 21. There's something I found the other day. The table shows the viewership of five primetime programs on a weekday. Okay, this is gonna be a hard one, I can tell. What is the total number of audience who tuned into program three? Okay, program three, base audience population 13,500. 13, 13, and we're given the formula here. So the first thing I'd do in this case would be to rearrange this formula. So we wanna find, we want to find out the number of people who tuned in. So we'll have to get this thing on, our, on its own. So rating times audience population divided by 100 will be the number of audience members who tuned in. Okay, so what is the total number of audience who tuned into program three? So we got 567 plus 594, and then we have to make the calculations for these two things. Okay, so we'll get the calculator up. So we know that the tuned in is the um, rating, so two times the population, 13,500. Okay, and then we'll divide that by 100, which should be this. So 270 people for that part. And we'll just do that same thing, but for 2.2 now. So we got 2.2 times 13,500 divided by 100. 197. And now we just add them all together. So we do plus what we just had before, 270, plus um, 567, and then plus 594. So there should be 1,728 people who tuned in the program three. Boom, next question. Approximately 24.8% of the audience who tuned in, to, in through the Cindy's services for program two were female. So what number of the audience who tuned in through the Cindy's services for program two were male? So we know just, um, well, how many percentages is that? So 100 take 24.8, can't do it in my head, so 100 take 24.8. So we know that 75.2% of the population is male. So what we have to do is calculate the total number of people who tuned in through this through this avenue and then just times it by 0.752 which is the percentage of males. We again we do the rate rating so 3 times the population so 9400 divided by 100 and then we'll times that by the percentage of males so 0.752 212 males, so the answer is E. Boom. Okay, that's all the questions I'm going to do today. Um, not only because I hate doing these questions, but also because my laptop kind of crashed halfway through. But if you've made it this far, um, thanks for tuning in, and if you found this video useful, liking and subscribing to the channel would be really cool. And also feel free to check out my other videos on the UCAT, just because I think they're pretty useful preparation for the tests which will be coming up uh, in Australia in the next few months. But otherwise I'll see you guys around in the next video which should be coming out in the next two weeks. So see you around.